The last round of la la last round of la la last round of horror show. <laughs> Welcome to the Last Roundup Horror Show. I am Frank. I'm Jason. I'm Jared. There we go. Doing it different. So stupid. Switching it up. It's classy. <laughs> um, let's get into Then the we need better names. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Try it again. Try it again, Frank. Okay. Everybody come up with a okay, cooler here name. We go, here we go. <laughs> Do it. All right. Welcome to the la- la- God, God, no. <laughs> welcome, no. to the, uh, welcome to the last roundup horse show. I am the Shawshank Redemption. I'm not doing uh, he's it. not doing. He's not playing, Jerry. <laughs> no, not he's doing he's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is. Um, anyways, let's get into these reviews and stop really dicking, uh, dicking off. Uh, oh, Jason, what freaking better horror name is that? You're the one that said you need a better name. He's not only you Jason. Need better. He's not I don't only. Like, I don't like your stupid <laughs> names. He's got Jason. His fucker. Name, oh, his name is Jared. His oh. name is Jason Miller, like iconic horror actor Jason Miller. And he's the one that said it. I was just going along well, with it. I don't know what more you want. Let's go back to what 19- more do you want? I'm werewolf. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. Let's take a tri- uh, trip back in time to 1958. And uh, a little movie called The Horror of Dracula, directed by Terrence Fisher, known for Hammer's Frankenstein and other films uh, from Hammer. Uh, He basically worked exclusively with them. And written by Jimmy Sangster, also known for his work with Hammer Studios. And this is based on the Bram Stoker novel, of course. Uh, Summary, Jonathan Harker begets the ire of Count Dracula after he accepts a job at the vampire's castle under false pretenses. Jason, any additional details? Tagline, don't dare see it alone. Distributed by Universal International. Uh, and this, this this does have some Blu-ray releases. Uh, UK, I think, but I, uh, I didn't get the company or the year. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the... the I don't Both know. vampers should have done <laughs> better. <laughs> uh, the... I don't, I'm not really familiar with Dracula a whole bunch. Uh, are all the movies about a librarian? Is he a librarian? No. That's a weird job for rich people. And I guess in the 1800s, rich people would hire librarians to come organize their books. That's like hiring someone to come organize your DVDs. No, the uh, you watched the Francis Ford Coppola one, right? Right. That one's a lot like the book. He's uh, loosely based on... Bram Stoker. Yeah, the Francis Ford Coppola one, and in, in the book, Jonathan yeah. Harker, he's uh works for like real estate, helping Dracula, oh, okay. a lawyer. He's a lawyer. That makes he's more sense. Helping Dracula buy up land in England. Because I'm thinking like, back in the 1800s, there was not that much shit to do. So if you had a bunch of books, you probably read them or organized them or read them or killed people. I, don't, I mean, there's not a lot for a vampire old timey dude to do. He's in a in a castle by himself. Um, I I thought that uh, Christopher Lee is a way better Dracula than, than Bela Lugosi. Um, I don't know if it's I think it's just the intensity, uh, and and I think that that comes from uh, I I read that Christopher Lee was genuinely horribly uncomfortable every time he had to wear those contact lenses. Uh, in fact, he couldn't see anything, and uh, he fell into a grave at one point on top of an actress because of this. <laughs> so uh, I think that that comes that leads to the intensity. He's probably literally in horrible pain. I li- I like him too. Um, He's my favorite Dracula. Yeah, and I thought Peter Cushing's uh, Van Helsing looks so much like the character that plays Jonathan Harker that whenever he finds his body in the catacombs, I thought it was some sort of inception shit. I'm like, is he finding himself? Because (laughs) they look so similar. They're dressed similar. Uh, And watched... And watched this with me. I think she commented the same thing. (laughs) I I said, did he just find himself? That's fucked up. Um, 
I had fun fun watching this old ass fucking movie. I don't think I've <laughs> this old ass fucking movie. <laughs> it feels old watching it. I don't think I've watched that many Hammer movies. If I've watched any, I, I like the Hammer movies. Um, you know, I've always heard about them. Uh, vampires, you know, they can be done well. This is a really well done vampire. Of course, you can really fuck it up too. Um, I think it's funny that at the end, he just puts two items together and forms a cross because that kind of makes you know vampires are pretty easy to defeat literally anything that you have you can just put it together done done so you got it all the time got two fingers <laughs> all the time blam uh, yeah but uh, uh for a genre of horror that i'm not really big on because these old movies are you know they're good they're good they're old they're good to a certain extent but um i can't i can't give it that high of a score because of how old it is uh i feel just my personal feelings, but it was, it was, fun. <laughs> I can't give anything before 1970 <laughs> a high score because it's before 1970. I'm just, I, the time period, uh, I, so I gave it a four out of 10. It was fun to watch it in the hollow Halloween season. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's just, I feel like the best Dracula. So yeah. Well, uh, I mean, watch hammer. That's, that's how you can sum that up. Um, Hammer, Hammer films. It's a, you're gonna get great sets. You're gonna get atmosphere. They always use uh, beautiful women. Uh, it feels like a classy, elegant horror film. Um, this is uh, Christopher Lee's first role as Dracula. I think he's very effective. Um, I guess intensity is a good word to use. That he just kind of radiates that. He's. Uh, like he's not, he's not you're the shape shifting Dracula. Like he's he's gonna grab you and throw you through a wall and bite your skull or something like that. Not skull, your neck. Um, Peter Cushing's amazing as always. I think this still holds up today. So how uh, uh, how effective of a film it, it was in what the fifty eight. Um. The vampires turn into dust. I love that. Uh, I'm I'm a sucker for Hammer, so I, this is one of my favorites. Um, I gave it a nine. I am right there with Jason. <clears throat> um, I lo- I love the old Hammers. The reason this one came up, it was originally I put it as a uh, choice for hoping people would pick it on the poll, and when no mm-hmm. one was did. When no one did. No one's. No one's Not did. one vote for it. I was like, fuck you. We're reviewing it anyways. <laughs> a lot of people's not into the old stuff. Like, I get why Frank don't like it, but... Um, but I, I had been talking to Rab, and uh, he's got a project coming up that's kind of like Hammer-themed, a bunch of writing that's Hammer-themed, and it had been a while since I got this, or since I watched this one. I got this for Christmas one year from uh, Carmen's mom and dad, and uh, I was excited Um because I mean, they just grabbed it out of like a dollar bin. They're like, "He likes horror movies. Sure, we'll grab this." And and I was looking through, and there are ones that I like in there, and gone through, and then that one popped up. I was like, "Shit, yeah." Um, but yeah, I love the old Hammers. I like the old Universal twos. I like the old monster movies. I always did. Um, the Hammer ones, the the old Universal ones with like Bella and Lon Chaney Jr. Um, I still like watching them, but they're they're not. They almost don't feel like horror. To me, the Hammer movies feel like a horror movie. Hammer is where I feel like the Universal monsters got turned into actual horror movies. Um, everything, the Gothic sets are always fantastic. Um, everything is. The Universals are are fun. Like a like, I mean, Dova. She's two and a half, three. She watches The Wolfman when we watch it out here. No, you know, they don't care about that, but. Um, and and <laughs> yeah, we don't care about what your daughter watches, Jerry. <laughs> no, I don't give a fuck about that. I guess she watched Sharknado with us too, so which is one of her favorite games to play. Now she builds up a castle out of blocks and then screams that she's a tornado shark, <laughs> knocks yeah. it over. But anyways, um, yeah, the the old hammers I think is where and and the blood, like this was around the time you know when color is starting to get popular and the bright fucking vibrant red blood and. I just I, I love the aesthetic of it. Um, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. I know you guys brought them up, so obviously they're 
they're fantastic. So it's great actors, and I love the whole aesthetic and the way it all feels. So I, I like all the hair movies. So yeah, I give it a nine. There you go. Uh, up next, uh, The Strangers Pray at Night from 2018. A family of four staying at a secluded mobile home park for the night are stalked when through when, when little up. <laughs> they're stalked and then hunted by three masked psychopaths. Directed by Johannes Roberts, known for 47 Meters Down. Written by Brian Bertino, known for the original Strangers film. Uh, and The Monster, which we reviewed. Uh, and and Bing, Bing, You might know well from our uh, review uh, of it. Of course you've seen our review. You may have heard it from us. <laughs> Um, but written by Brian Bertino, known for well, uh, fuck Ben Katai was the other guy. God damn it! Written by words and letters and words and letters. <laughs> ben Katai, known for like three different Thirty Days of Night projects that he did. Um, do you have any additional details on this? Uh, tagline: Let us pray. Distributed by Averon Pictures. I don't know. I've never I've never heard of that one before. Uh, and it does have a Blu-ray through Universal Pictures 2018. Um, I was going to rewatch the first movie to have a little bit of context, but then I thought better of it because I didn't want to... I think that that one might be a better movie than Well, I, I I did that, and uh, it had been a while. It's The first one's like 10 years old now or something. So it's yeah. been a while since I've seen it, and I just got the new Scream Factory Blu-ray. Um. Oh yeah, so that should have been on there too. So this is this is out on Scream Factory. Um, I was thinking that maybe it would have, you know, it it would be uh, there would be a correlation there, like that. Maybe some story from the first one is is brought over, or something was brought over. But you do not need to watch the first one to get this yeah. one at all. Yeah, it just jumps right into it. Um, uh, Christina Hendricks is always delightful to see. I'll tell you what, she's just fantastic. She's is, is that the young girl? That's the mom. Okay. You don't you never seen her before? Uh, tell you what. what Jared's she seen her before. <laughs> what, what are you doing back here? She got titties or what? Yeah, she yeah, does. So. She's she's beautiful. She didn't have much she must not had him out in this one. Frank, no. Frank said she's like <laughs> <laughs> She's a beautiful actress. All right. Um uh I, I'll tell you what, you don't hear the word queef enough used in modern movies. That, that was pretty funny. Excellent usage. Excellent queef usage. Uh, I think this movie goes along at, at just the right pace. If I remember right, the first one's a little bit slower than this was. This kind of jumps right into it a little bit. Um, they give you everything you need, and it doesn't leave you waiting for something to happen. I wasn't watching the time. Uh, I hope they keep making these because I really like all the characters. Uh, I, uh, I think they're, it's, a good, it's a good franchise. Um. Yeah, the kills aren't spectacular, really, but they are functional and they're well done. Uh, nice homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the end. Did I get it? That time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, I really like this a lot. I hope they figure out a way to keep this going. Uh, <laughs> he says, he says homage every time with. <laughs> With such pride. Nice. I thought it was a nice. It's not going to change. I thought it was a nice homage. Huh? (laughs) Did I get it? No. What about this time? Since since the first episode. Like I just, you, I'm waiting for you to accept it. <laughs> if you go back to the first episode, there's Frank saying homage. I'm accepting it. I'm ready to go with it. I just the the pride you had was what was what caught me, prideful, a prideful face. Yeah, uh, I give this an, yeah, eight, okay. an eight out of ten, guys. Wow, yeah, I liked it a lot. Uh, yeah, so it's a, a definitely a, a different tone than the first one. The first one is uh, home invasion. This one felt a lot like a slasher. Uh, there's many nods or ripoffs. To other movies, I'm not sure if the what if the director was was doing it on purpose, um, as a homage, a homage, <laughs> uh, as an homage. But um, it's very heavy on the tropes. It's pretty vanilla. Nothing groundbreaking or 
really that original about the movie. Um, this movie has a lot of hate. It's a lot of hate. A lot of people don't like it. I, I get that. Uh, the acting was okay. <clears throat> At the beginning of the movie, I really didn't like the young girl. Like, I didn't like the way she was acting, but I think... I think she did a pretty good job later on in the movie. Um, interesting song choices. Yeah. The uh, the pool scene was very... That was that It's was because cool. that dude's like... He has to listen to, like, 80s New Wave. That's his thing. Um, <laughs> it's, an, it's an okay story. Um, I was expecting it to be more connected to the first one somehow, but this... It was basically just, like, watching the... It, it started off the same way. You, you hear the knock, knock at the door, and then and then this this one is the pacing in this one. I think is a lot better than the first one, even though I like the first one. I, I like how slow it is. Um, it, it just I don't know. It, it kind of felt a little sh- a little short. It fell a little short. Um, but I gave it a six. Um, yeah. I'd- I don't know that I actually rated this one all the way. It's a six or a seven. I'll pick by the time I'm done talking. Um, <laughs> I never watched the first one. I didn't see the first one. Um, I looked up uh, a quick review to see like what I'd need to know. And the first thing I've seen is that you don't need to know anything. Um, the person I seen talking about it said this one was better than the first one. No, 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 no. no. So I had. N- I guess it just it, I, like I'm telling you, two different tones. The one Maybe. slow home invasion kind of uh, and a lot of I don't know. That's what they were saying. The thing I seen said uh, in the first one, it almost you don't. It takes so long before they kill someone, you don't almost don't even they, know. They mess with them more. It's more drawn out. It seems like this they, one. They're just wanting to yeah, kill them. The, the, they were saying the first one seemed like that might just be a joke until like it takes so long to kill someone. This one, they just come in killing, and whoever appreciated that more. But I guess, you know, I'll give this a six because thinking about that, I watched this one and was like, well, if this is the better one, I don't need to watch the first one. Yeah, I think the, I, I think I remember liking the first one a lot more. Dennis uh, Dennis from It's Always Sunny shows up at the end. Um, so that's a nice little thing. Yeah, yeah it's so hard. that That's probably the what bothers me the most out of that first <laughs> movie because it's so hard to take him playing a serious role. Like, I kept uh, waiting for him to, like, I don't know, say something stupid, make a joke or... <laughs> But yeah, I, there's call someone a bird. I, I don't really have I don't really have any serious criticism of this movie. No. I mean, e- everything is, is done competently and enjoyable. Um, it's only big fault I would say is having nothing that stands out. Yeah, it's like like you said, it's like drinking a glass of water. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's very it's very if you're very thirst uh, slasher feeling. Yeah, if you're thirsty. It'll refresh you, but you're not going to be like, oh, that tastes really good. That's the distinct flavor. You never tell anybody about a glass of water. But, but yeah, it's good. Um, and I, like, I, I didn't, I wasn't angry. I had to watch it. It was, it was fine. It was slasher feeling and it very familiar. Honestly, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a horrible sequel. And some people feel that way, but I, I think it's pretty decent. It's very slasher like. They do nothing groundbreaking in, in that subgenre. It's done well. It's like they, they know what people like. They do it real quick and then they, they get out. What? Yeah, they collect their paycheck. Yeah, the characters are the characters are cool looking. Yeah. And they kill people. And I mean if that's all you want, this is a this is a fine movie. So I give it a six though, just it's it's pretty just straightforward in what it is. Nothing now, as you, since you watched the first one, um, did you notice a difference between the killers? Because it's a completely different cast. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I didn't notice that much, but people threw a fit when the the same guy wasn't playing the the man in the mask. the guy with the, yeah. the bag on his head. But it nothing. It, it's two different movies. It's two different tones. So I don't think there's any effect. That, I, I didn't notice anything at all. If it would have been the same. The same style of movie and little things that that he did that stood out. This guy didn't do. I can understand that, but this is yeah. It's two different movies. Overall, I uh, it was the way that like they basically w- it's just, he he's in, he's in the truck the whole time. But yeah. It seems like so what like I don't know. When, um, and that's you know that is a that is one thing that I did think was pretty cool was the scene where 
the dude, uh, the dad, who's from Grey's Anatomy, you'll be like, where's that guy? Yeah, no, I, I wasn't wondering who that was. No, I, 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 I'm I, like, I don't I've know seen that was. motherfucker somewhere. Where, what the fuck is it? And I'm looking through, and nothing on Amazon, Amazon will show me. It wasn't have... until he went to back episodes of Grey's Anatomy. Well, I was like, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy on my own accord. Yeah, it's forced upon me by my wife. He watches. So, I, okay, I watch. Millions of people watch it. Just say you watch I it. I watch it. I don't, love it. You don't be ashamed. If I can watch a love story unfold in a dark hospital, I'm all about it. There. But no, Doesn't that feel better? It does feel does better. Does it feel like there's a chest. weight off your chest? It does. Um, Thank but, you. But yeah, I was like, who, where the fuck's this dude from? But he, anyways, uh, he's in a car and he's impaled with like a tree trunk or something. And his son goes to get help or what. He has to know that his dad's going to die. He has to know. But this guy comes and sits in the car with him. It's a pretty cool scene. He turns the radio, turns the radio on, on, gets yeah. some nice music going, and then he just stabs him. It's unimpressive. <laughs> I thought he was really going to do something cool, but he just stabs him. Um, yeah, it was all right. It was a glass of water. It's fine. Let's see if uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's fine. It's fine. Leave it alone. <laughs> let's, let's see what you guys thought about Hell Baby. Um, I didn't write a summary down, so I'll just tell you what this is. This is a comedy, Rosemary's Baby. Um, there's other homages throughout, and uh, it was written by the. It's homage, right? Yeah, it is. Like uh, uh, yeah, it's it homage. Is. Can we be serious for a <laughs> it second? Is homage. Is it? oh, it's homage. I've been right. bullshitting homage. you guys. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, anyways, um, this is written by the guys that did Reno 911. Um, he it. might even uh, the people might even actually pronounce the H sometimes. I think you can yeah. say homage as well. The one thing it is not is homage. Is homage. <laughs> it's not what it's not what Polly Shore would call going home after munching on some grindage. <laughs> it's son-in-law. Yeah. I'm going to munch on some grindage after I get some homage. Munch on some... So, I cut you off, Frank. I'm sorry. Anyways, this is a comedy, Rosemary's Baby. Um, do you have any details on this? Because I have none, really. Uh, uh, from 2013, it's rated R. We've got an hour, 38 minutes. Uh, got a, Written by Robert Ben Garrett. Yeah, Robert Ben Gar- Garant. Garant. And Thomas Lennon. Yeah. Um, tagline, the devil got a baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Distributed by Millennium Entertainment and out on Blu-ray from 2013 by Millennium. Um, uh, this movie reminded me a lot of House, the comedy did a little bit. Uh, more than anything, that old lady that keeps popping up. I mean, me. it's it's scary movie is the tone. The different yeah. jokes because different comedians. Better I get jokes. I get comedians have completely different styles, but just it's. I mean, we say horror comedy and we're saying an homage. It's really not. It's a spoof. Yeah. It, it's just a spoof movie. It's like scary movie. Uh, more so the one and two than the after the airplane people took over. I think that was I've three, seen whatever. none of them. But uh, um, but yeah, it's it's just ridiculous slapstick comedy. I think that this is more evergreen than those scary movies because they like they don't get topical. It's just weird shit that happens. More like an airplane, I guess. I don't know. Um. I love Keegan Michael Key as Fresnel. He's probably my favorite character. Hilarious every time he just shows up randomly and scares the the fuck out of uh, Rob Corddry. Um, <coughs> uh, highlight uh, performance from this film: Ricky Lindholm. Uh, I'll tell you what, she really did, took one for the team. What's the old lady's name? Miss Ninnenbaum? Nunnenbaum? Nun, nun, Nutsbaum? I don't know. That's uh, bothering me now. The, yeah. Um, but Ricky Lindholm plays uh, Rob Corddry's wife's sister, and when she shows up, she's naked for like 15 minutes <laughs> or something like that. And if you don't know her, she's from uh, Garfunkel and Oates. They're like a musical comedy group. Um, the segments I don't care for in this movie, I like most of it, are the scenes with Thomas Lennon and Ben Garant, honestly, with the, where they're doing the Father Guido, Guido Sarducci b- bullshit. I don't like that. Um yeah, that's about it, though. Um, yeah, I also didn't like seeing Leslie Bibb drink the blood from the meat package. That was uh, fucking out of line. Um, but Rob Rob Hubel and Paul Shear are great as the cops. It fucking made me laugh every time. Uh, Rob Corddry is great as the uh, frustrated, befuddled uh, 
put upon guy. Uh, the my my favorite part is when Kumail uh, Nanjiani comes in as the cable. Uh, I'm just here for the cable internet, and he gets high, and then <laughs> that whole scene where they're uh, getting high is is really. They go outside. There's an earthquake in the house. They go outside. It's not. And, and Kumail, if you don't know who he is, look him up on YouTube and shit. He's fucking great. Um, and and uh, the uh, dog poop. When you see a dog, when you see a dog, what else you see? Dog poop. <laughs> hey, what is that? Dog poop. Uh, overall, I really like this movie a lot. Uh, I kind of held off making you guys watch this for a while. I think the demon puppet looks good. The demon baby look. I mean, it looks better than a lot of puppets when in movies. It's not just a prop doll whenever it's moving and it's biting and stuff. It's, it's an actual moving puppet. Uh, the, the, I think the horror w works in it. The things that are horror mix well with the comedy. Um, uh, especially stuff like Thomas uh, Lennon's death um, and Michael Ian Black's death. Uh, that's some good, good gore and horror, in my opinion. Um, and I could have just done without the Italian stereotype shit. Um, seven out of ten. Uh, yeah, no, it's funny. It feel it feels like one of the scary movies, uh, which I haven't seen any of those. Those aren't my thing. This this movie isn't really this whole thing is not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> my thing. Uh, it's worth a watch. It's definitely not something I'm gonna buy. Uh, the effects were okay. It's uh, it's for fans of of Reno Reno nine one one and and those scary movies. It's but it was it was well done. I mean, uh, it's just middle of the road for me. I gave it a five. I gave it an eight. I mean, I'm a uh, I'm I'm definitely grading it on what it is, which is not a horror movie. I mean, it's a comedy. It's just it's just straight comedy. But I I in I grew up watching Viva Variety and Reno 911, so the two Italian priest guys, I've liked them for years. They made me laugh. Rob Cordry's funny in it. Uh, Fresnel, what's his name? Keegan Michael. Keegan Mike and Key. Like he's hilarious in it. I, I mean, it, there's a there's a bunch of great comedians in it, and they're all really funny, like they normally are. All the jokes are funny. Um, there, there's it's lots of funny stuff. If you want to watch something. Like scary, if you like the scary movies, it's better than any of the scary movies yeah, for definitely. sure. Um, the but uh, but that's what it is for what it is. I'd give it an I give it an eight. It's like I la I laughed all the way through. I laughed it, at it all wasn't the jokes. As funny as what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, like when I saw the people in it, like I I didn't like watch Reno, you know, regularly, but. I watched it. It was funny, but I expected this to be yeah. okay. Now, now you're not on TV. Now you can, which uh, I mean, the, st the stuff is a lot. It's definitely uh, up a notch from that. But I, I don't know. I expected it to be funnier. Yeah, everybody. It was, also could have been. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I was in a bad mood, but I just wasn't. And this ain't just not your thing. If I go back and watch this, knowing what it is and what to expect. It might be better, but it's just yeah. Yeah. Um. One thing. One thing that made me laugh. That's so cheap. Like it's a, and that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm a sucker for a shit joke, and there are so there. I mean, there's so many in here, <laughs> but the fucking boxes. When he, moves, <laughs> when he moves the boxes out of the way of the door and turns back and there's oh. more and he's startled and he turns away and moves them and then there's more and then every door he starts turning to and he just screams well, every, or why won't you stop startling me like I, it's such a shit gag yeah. and uh, like I, I was I was rolling laughing at it um, Miss uh, Noose Bomb is it Noose yeah. Bomb? Yeah, that sounds so. right. Miss Newsbomb. Miss Newsbomb uh, fucking laughed my ass off every time she fucking <laughs> pops up. Like, I mean, it's it's a movie full of shit gags that are horror gags. Uh, but like I said, I loved Viva Variety. I love Reno 911. I like a lot of the stuff Cordry did and yeah. is in um, and Children's Hospital. And mm -hmm. it's Ian, Ian Michael Black. That's Michael his Ian name. Black, yeah. Michael Ian Black. Um, and the two cops and like no one is doing no one is doing anything that would surprise you for who they are it's yeah. I, I mean it's pretty much all just what they normally do in a horror movie setting and i, I laughed so yeah. a lot i thought that they could have uh i didn't think that it, i love all the comedians in here 
but I've seen them all do better things. Uh, I don't know why they weren't at their full potential because if they were, this would be fucking amazing. I would. Uh, this would be the yeah, best. Yeah, I mean, it world. just seems like a movie they all got together and was like, "Hey, let's fucking." I don't know who the. Pro- I wasn't listening when you it said was who Thomas, produced it. It was her. Thomas <laughs> Lennon and Ben Garant. But yeah, I mean, both been better in Reno Nine One One. Uh, Travis Jr. and and Dangle are the two two of the, the, the two best characters on the show. It seemed like they had an idea and had fun making it, and maybe that maybe that the uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were scenes they didn't really have scripted. I mean, they had like loose scripts or whatever, but yeah, I'm sure they were improving. Yeah, like I don't think that, that all the jokes were wrote. They were probably just. They all seem like friends. I imagine they were just all together making a movie, having oh, yeah. a fun time. That's what it comes off of. I mean, it's not it's not a comedy that's going to break ground or the greatest comedy ever made. But it's funny. I mean, it's everybody just doing what they do, and yeah. they're it's, all funny people. It's a what? fun time. And what, what is this? This is on Shudder? Yeah, it, so I think to, it might be on pay Netflix, it. too. Uh, I know it's on Shudder. It's on Tubi. Tubi. It's the worst name ever. He's on Tubi. Yeah. I think uh, you just make it sound bad. Probably. <laughs> I think you make it sound bad. I haven't Damn. even said it. Yeah. I refuse to say it. That's how bad it that's how bad you make it. <laughs> he won't even say it. I would tell you, but I'd have to I can't I can't. Um I'd tell you how to say it properly. But I'll tell you where you can see that movie, but uh, uh don't say that. I hate that word. <laughs> uh all right, 2015, The Witch. Is this the last one? This is the last one. This was the poll, the poll pick. You guys chose this. I shouldn't have put it in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any details. I fucking forgot to write anything down oh about my this. God, yeah, I was Frank. wondering how you'd feel about this one, Frank. Yeah, do you have I'm curious. I got you. Curious how both of you feel about it, actually. Uh, well, I guess well we're going to tell you, Jared. <laughs> just, all you got to do is be patient. We'll take a quick commercial and we'll come back. <laughs> we're going to let you know. Why, do, why don't we have commercials? <laughs> take a second here and just t- uh, listen to Jared talk about Burt's Bees medicated lip balm. I actually use Burt Bees <laughs> medicated lip balm. Everybody. 2015 does. rated R, hour 32 minutes, written by Robert Edgars. Uh, also directed by him, tagline, A New England Folk Tale. And when I wrote that down, <laughs> like, I immediately thought, like, it, I mean, I guess the movies, you watch movies without knowing the tagline, but if you read this tagline and then complain about, like, how slow the movie is, like, it tells you right there in the tagline what you're going to get. Like, that, <laughs> sh- that explains it. <laughs> But anyway, uh, distributed by A24 and on Blu-ray and Lionsgate 2016. Well, I didn't, well. Like, <laughs> I didn't like this one from the beginning. Uh, lay off the fucking fiddles, buddies. Good Lord. The the caption said... And them fucking violins again. <laughs> the fucking, Frank hates the fucking violin. Uh, in this movie, they fiddles. Um, and the the caption said... Ominous music intensifies. It should have said, Shrill fiddle it gets louder. Fucking loud as shit, motherfucker. <laughs> what are you watching this on? What'd you want? I have headphones on. I was See? Uh, I don't know what you got. I don't have a surround sound in any room of my house. It's TV or headphones. Um, I tend to not like period pieces like this, so it makes sense that I don't... I seem like a fucking... I hate everything. <laughs> like, I don't like vampires. I don't, I don't, if, it, if it ain't... I don't like cars. If it ain't stupid and shitty. Regional I like, bears. I don't like sports. Um, <laughs> but I did. But the thing is, I did like The Village, which everybody seemed to hate. Uh, this That was kind of a period piece, if you don't know the twist. <laughs> but uh spoiler <laughs> i hate this movie so much it's a bunch of smar- <laughs> smarmy bullshit and uh, uh, it's less it's less interesting than a movie about american history <laughs> i look at good handle it i am now grateful that people chose this so you had to watch it <laughs> there's not much that could possibly happen in this movie to make me enjoy it but good lord i hope something more interesting than watching settlers eat a candlelit dinner occurs soon I don't know what point I wrote that, 
but good lord, I was miserable. <laughs> good. I hate every fucking. Time. This is my like my my good. I, this is my commentary. And it all started with you. <laughs> I know you put it out there. I'm like, nah, hey, this was fucking, this was. It's like I'm cutting I myself. Him. I hate my. Oh. It was your poll pick? Yeah, it was my poll pick. Oh, that was Frank. I I it. No, it's my poll pick. All I picked right. the witch and something else because I've been wanting to watch it. Oh, but uh, this is like my live. This is like my live commentary here. Uh, there's still 50 minutes or so left of this slow burn nightmare and I'm already done with it. I hate every fucking second of this movie. It's a huge bummer set in a time period. I don't enjoy and using prose that I cannot stand. This is not entertainment to me. <laughs> there's literally, literally nothing I can say about this movie aside from it effectively did its job of bumming me out. Never once saying, wow, that was badass or what a fun film this is. Uh, it was made very well. But you can plan a very fancy funeral, and I still will ultimately give every funeral a 1 out of 10. <laughs> they are not enjoyable events, just like this film, a funeral of a motion picture. On, an, on a side note, I really want to take the end scene uh, uh, and um, sync it up with the Beetlejuice music, and I did that shit. So that's the best part of this movie, is that that happened. I give this a 1, <laughs> fuck this movie, and it's ass. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, thanks, guys. <laughs> made my night. Yeah, no, I, I really thought this was Frank's pick, but because that, that's what made it even funnier to me. Like, what? No, I it, swear he did it as I, I made a comment on a on I another I did movie. Pikachu, like, right? I would not recommend no. this because for we've Frank. been talking about this in the group forever. He because he was said that when I first picked. I have to look at the movies that were picked. We'll yeah, have no, to, we'll it, have to review. To I, the I, I I promise. <laughs> sure, he's the way. <laughs> Uh, I promise I picked the witch. Either way, it's funny. <laughs> Either way, you I made promise. me miserable. Because I've been planning, did. I've been planning on picking this one since uh, <laughs> since was it out when our first episode we were doing? Like it was one of the first ones when it came out. I was going to pick it, but yeah, it I've been holding off. 2015. On it. Yeah, yeah. So this was, I almost picked this one instead of one of mine for the first episode. Uh, well, I, whoever did it, I'm glad. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned before, the very first thing I wrote down was, was about the tagline, a New England folk tale. I mean, that's exactly what this movie is. It's a period piece. Um, from what I've heard from, like, whoever, scholars or whatever, said that it's the closest movie uh, Yeah, they to, to be in... To be in real, realism... Authentic. From that, from that time period. Yeah. That they've seen. I don't know, but it... it it, 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 I mean, I was there. I felt like I was back in whatever yeah. whatever time period that was. Had a hat on. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I was like I almost just like I was a fly on the wall. Yeah, watching I, this all go down. I looked it up after watching because I I was impressed. I'm not well, a, the witch trials, in New England, whenever that was. I am not an expert on well, it. Tell me what when? Yeah, the 1800s, 1700s, six something, well, anyway. whatever. Colonial America, so. You know, back a well, long time ago, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. Do you, so, have, do you have something else to add? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 you done forgot it. Come you, on. You've lost me. 2000s. Oh, after watching it, like, I, I thought it looked really authentic. I'm not an expert, right. though, so I looked, up, I looked it up after watching it, and they said they spent an insane amount of time researching, and... Everywhere I went, said, "Yeah, this is like they were. Looks, they were getting down. Great. They were getting down to the stitches." In I've the heard. Costumes. I heard like even the, the nails and and the way the, like joists were put together. Everything is yeah. Like they that's insane. They went overboard on it, but um, it it paid off. It feels like yeah, that. No, I like it. Feels it's like a, that time period that I don't know what it is. It's a it's a slow burn, uh, but it, it held my attention. Um, again, it's a, the period piece, so I understand why Frank and other people don't like it. Um, uh, the, the good use of music. Um, mm. I like the uh, what? What's the word? Uh, <laughs> Bad fiddle. <laughs> no, 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 the uh, uh, the uh, portrayal of the witch. Uh, what's the better word? Come on, Jared. Then portrayal. Yeah. Um, I I don't know what word here. The, the depiction. There. This. I like it. I like. <laughs> I like the way the witch is, and I think. I could have used a little bit more of that, but I understand that this movie is about the witch putting a curse on this family and slowly watching them just crumble and fall apart. Um, uh, I thought the acting was great. Some of the best scenes I think were where the the kids were 
uh, like tormenting each other and like those those little twins or whatever. Like they little assholes. They're yeah, like the, they caused like all you, of this. Like how do you have the kids <laughs> act like that? Um, the little boy when when he's going through his possession or or whatever that was like that is a crazy intense scene. Um. I th- even the goat did a good job. I mean, that yeah. black goat. <laughs> I thought even the, the, goat, the did goat, goat did a good job. The goat did a good job. I don't know. It's, this just works for me. Um, I love witch movies. At this movie, I had to immediately turn the subtitles on. Like, if you watch this movie, you have to watch it with the subtitles. You're not going to understand half of what's going on. But the sound effects are loud. Eh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was I another notice, thing. I didn't anything. I seen the director made all of the cast take lessons in uh, Essex dialect. Yeah, I had to turn them on and, immediately. Um, I think it, it that just being back in that that time, there's just automatically a, a, a sense of dread, like where you're getting your next meal and and stuff like that. Um, they all get uh, the strong sense of paranoia. Um, and this is his debut, directorial debut. Are you kidding me? Like for your first movie, you're gonna build this set like down to the. The did, way it's supposed to be, and go through all this for your first. Did you movie? look at any of the problems they had filming too? Because uh-uh. the whole movie is they they could only shoot on days where it was gray enough. But think about it: the whole movie is outside kids and animals, and those are like the th- those are the three worst things. And it's what the movie is, right? And like that's what shooting it was. So like he handled all of this on his debut. Uh, yeah, so I I, lo- I like this movie. Um, he has a new one coming out. I forget what it is, but I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, I gave this one an 8. I as well. Um yeah, I, I think I think he did a great job. Like I said, I've been planning on picking it since the beginning, but I knew I knew what it was going to be. And so I was trying to wait um we've had some slow ones too, but I was trying to wait till I was in the right mood. Because this would definitely be a movie that <laughs> I just what want mood, man. I just want close-ups of his face. I'm trying to think of what mood this is. You would be in like, are you too happy? You're like, God damn, I'm having a great day. I'm having such a great day. Uh, and then you put or, when or, you're in a mood to watch a slow burn, like yeah, it's I, not. I think everyone knows what like what you're getting into. Like, what are you expecting? It's not just slow burn. This New England witch trial. Like that, this whole all... movie is dread. It is just <clears throat> gray dread, paranoia. Dread. And I, I I heard it was really good, but I knew how slow it would be, and I wanted to wait until I was not just the mood. It's a movie you got to invest in. You you have to travel. Let it take you back to that time and it did take frank you back. i'm telling you i was there i felt like I oh i felt like i was there watching, i didn't watch this be there. family like just yeah you fall apart you, you have to you, be in a in a mental state to be ready to be transported there and just a terrible dreadful looming doom feeling through the whole gotta, time and 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 roll with that you got to listen to them talk the way they do and it's just like I didn't Fuck. mind that. Like I I'm, said, subtitles. I'm not always big on period pieces, but when you get when when you make it feel authentic and not hokey, and you do it right, um, I, I think I'll they be, could honest, be really for, good. For for a first film, he's probably winning an award, but it would be a sadness award <laughs> because he fucking Frank did. didn't laugh, so he didn't like the movie. No, that's, it is a quality. That's a, that's a trend with you. It is you. such a quality sadness. <laughs> You can really get sad in just a very specific way. Did you get sad? I, was I mean, I was never sad. I am in gen- I'm generally just depressed in life. No, I, it, just kept, in, like, it, it just kept. Like a sadness It just kept building and building and building and building. I, there were kids every, that died. Like every day something the, was going on. Everybody in this family dies except for the one person that I guess shouldn't die because she was the one that was the most level-headed through this fucking whole thing, but then she just fucking goes in with the devil. Buddy. Well, what'd you want her to do? <laughs> I don't know. At that point, yeah. die like what everybody else did. Have? Yeah, like like no, that's the I'd thing. Go like float in the woods with his witches. Honestly, I think that if he hadn't actually made witches be a thing, it might have been a little bit more interesting to me. But they floated up in the air, just like fucking the end of Beetlejuice. And that's what it fucking reminded me of. <laughs> it's a folk tale. Did we get this before? Yeah. It's a tale. It's a Christmas tale. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a folk tale. They'll do whatever they want. That's true. That's true. But, but all right. Do you have more? I'm, I'm done. I'm well, done. yeah. I mean, I was talking about it, and you cut me off to bitch. Well, I, so. I, Jared, let's be honest. Sometimes motherfuckers gotta cut you off. <laughs> but continue. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they they do a great. They do. He does a great job of setting up the atmosphere to suck you into the movie. I think all the kids did a great job. Um, the, the, the story is told great. I love I love it how the the girl who didn't want to leave in the beginning when they were kicked out and seemed to be the most worried about everything was the one who at the end like makes the deal with Satan and joined the witches. Like I, I think everything, all the characters were handled really well. I think it was just done really well, but it is an incredibly slow movie. There's no jump scares. There's not I a single. I don't want those. There's not a <laughs> single jump scare. It's not a lot of action. It's just building dread and doom through the whole thing, and then at the end, giving in to Satan. The, I will say, and I, that's the, the movie. I mean, sounds like something the, you would like, Frank. <laughs> the, so the, I give it an eight. The best part of this movie for me was Frank the, should have gave it an eight too. This should the be scene recommendation. That, no, I don't like how it made me feel. So that's fuck you, movie one. What what's it what does it got to be to be certified a twenty four? Yep. Me and Jason both give an it, average of eight. Me and Jason both give it twelve. I can tell you all <laughs> that that. Go can ahead. we do that? I I suggest you watch it. Oh, give okay. it your own uh, opinion. No, you're whatever. not alone. Like there's a lot of no, a lot of people. Uh, but start the movie. 15 minutes in, if you don't like how you feel, no, it's not going to get better. You're not going to feel better, better about yourself. But the scene that I thought was the most effective was when the kid dies, the the son, the last old the oldest son, whatever. He and he like talks to Jesus. Remember that scene? Yeah, that was very effective. Yeah, that was the highest level of horror in the movie for that me. That scene is terrifying, but I didn't like it. <laughs> so it wasn't entertaining to me. But anyways. Are we done? <laughs> Are we done? I don't, I'm all riled up. I want to talk about what we're going to watch next. He yeah, doesn't even want to talk about the movie anymore. We're no. done. Are we done? <laughs> no one gets to talk. The movie sucks. Are we done? We're done. This is one for the mailbag. mailbag. Well, for the mailbag. Everybody. They going to do it. Email us. Let us know what you thought of The Witch. You guys chose it. Let us know what you thought of it and what what you think of what we think of it. Yell what at me and Jason. What did thou thinkest of it? Uh, it's probably 50-50. I bet yeah, it it's is. not. It's definitely not a movie for everyone. You have to want to watch something like this or you won't enjoy it. Yo. But anyways, what do you got for uh, our next viewings? Uh, we got some Christmas stuff coming up and then... Another. Is Christmas the next one after this? Yeah. Okay. I got Jack. Yeah. 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 I got one for you. Jack Frost hey. is the Christmas movie. There you go. The Killer Snowman. There's some campy trash for you. And uh, um, what was my other one? It was between two. House by the Cemetery. Hmm. Paltry. There we go. Um, we had some listener poll picks. What's that? Of- oh, yeah. Why are you winking? I at like him? that. I like it too. That's my favorite. <laughs> winking at you. That's my <laughs> nice job. That's my job. favorite. Fulci I like movie. Jack Frost too. We're on yeah. a roll. Yeah. I really Frank's like. Gonna mess it up. But no, I really no, like no, Jack no. Frost when he gets hit by the truck and screams, "I can see your house from up here" as he flies through the air. That's a good movie. Oh, uh, the the listener poll uh, winners were the Mutilator and Shrooms, so we'll be watching those. And I am picking the Children from two thousand eight. Uh, for my Christmas film, you can watch that on Tubi. <laughs> what can you watch it on, Jason? You won't say it. Say it. The internet. <laughs> oh, I, I, on what? Find it yourself. What site? You can see it on Google. What's your other one? <laughs> uh, Tales from the Hood Two. You can watch that on Netflix. Let's see if he rates it higher than The Witch. <laughs> what did you have? <laughs> what were your selections? Uh, a Christmas horror story, and. The Slayer. Slayer! <laughs> I was gonna... I told Jason today I was gonna complain about another anthology movie. Yeah? With Christmas Horror Story. But uh, it's tied together. The story tied together. The ties of the stories together stars Shatner. Uh, so... Have you seen this before? No. I haven't seen You'll like it. any of these films before. Good Christmas so, movie. So, I'll no, I've watch. Seen, I've seen Jack Frost. 
I haven't seen anything else. Though. It'll so be a good Christmas special. Hmm. We'll talk about Bill Shatner. Last year was good too. Black Christmas and mm. Christmas Shat- Evil. Shatner makes it feel like Christmas every day. I got his album has been for Christmas one year. Do you have his Christmas album? I don't. <laughs> but I got his album has been for Christmas, and now Shatner always makes it feel like Christmas. It's always Christmas with Shatner. It's always Christmas with William Shatner. Well, um, I guess we're going to get into the mailbag, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we what got mail this week. Oh, okay. Emailed uh, in. No mail. Oh, still That's no funny. mail. It's funny. How that happens. You ask and you ask and you ask. I even broke down in the group at one point. I just posted up the pictures of the movies. I said, just put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You guys are fucking me. Aren't and you? everybody's <laughs> like, no, no one gives a fuck what you think. <laughs> you can't tell me what That's to why do. no one listens to your show. I guess you got to give them shit away. Or <laughs> like, oh. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like is that is that the view? I guess it is now. Just just There's half of others, me, though. just my arm. I'll make I'm, sure to focus in on you. I'm out of frame. Uh, don't fuck. I'm story. not even in frame. I had it in frame before I had to plug it in, so we got about an hour. It's all right, of good got stuff. me here. Right there. Yeah, we're done. There he is. You. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm done.